the Indian subcontinent, surrounded on the south, east and west by the seas, and on the north by the Himalayas, is a land of enchanting beauty and the cradle of ancient civilizations. The development of Coimbatore, from the small hamlet it was in southern India during the Chola period, to the rapidly expanding metropolis it is today, is a fascinating story in itself. The success story of Coimbatore is inextricably mixed up with the fortunes of the Kannavar settlers, of whom Periya Govinda Swami Naidu was an outstanding exemplar. He was a prosperous farmer who survived against all odds. He had dedicated himself to selfless service of the needy and at a time when the only modes of transport were the bullock cart and the horse, he rode out on his magnificent horse to reach out to those who were in need of medical attention without any discrimination of caste, creed or status. Periya Govinda Swami Naidu was a deeply religious person. He built and maintained a Vinayakar temple and a Mariamman temple at Papanayakan Padayam village and also established the Sri Srinivasa Perumal temple which today is a place of pilgrimage. Periya Govinda Swami Naidu took for his bride in the year 1880 Ammaniyammal. Great was the rejoicing when Ammaniyammal gave birth to a boy on the 31st of December 1884 whom the couple named Kuppuswami. Young Kuppuswami grew up to be a fine boy who showed special attention in wrestling, wielding of lathis and in the development of his body to greater perfection. At the tender age of 14, Kuppuswami gave up schooling and turned his attention to agriculture. It was then that he hit upon the idea of trading in cotton. He conceived the idea of setting up a ginning factory to aid the chakra spinners, for chakra spinning was a way of life in most homes. He set up a ginning factory at Naranapuram in Papanayakanpalayam and used a pair of oxen to pull the rollers and the gin. On the advice of Sir Robert Staines, Kupuswami turned to the oil engine. That way, Kupuswami and Sir Robert Staines were pioneers to do mechanized ginning in Coimbatore in the 1900s itself. Kupuswami entered into marital bliss with Lakshmi Ammar, daughter of Periyavidi Ramaswami Naidu of Vayyampalayam in the year 1909. Ever ambitious, he was not content with the small ginning factory he had. When his maternal uncle handed over to him a lakh of rupees as his share in the maternal property, Kupuswami immediately started what was then known as Lakshmi Mills Company Limited with a capital of 80,000 rupees. Founded as a modest cotton ginning factory, he had the idea of making the Lakshmi Mills Company Limited eventually into a spinning and weaving mill. A big dream indeed. It was in this distinguished family that G.K. Sundaram was born on the 20th of September, 1914. As a little boy, Sundaram was brought up in an atmosphere of deep piety without the slightest hint of garish flamboyance or pompous living. It was to the London Mission Primary School that Sundaram was admitted for his early years of schooling. From primary school, he went on to Sarvajana High School for his secondary education. This period in the life of Sundaram would have passed off uneventfully, but for the turmoil that was shaking the entire nation on the political plane. Gandhiji had stormed onto the scene with the cyclonic force of his messianic non-violence, and the call had gone out for volunteers for his salt satyagraha. To Sundaram, who was just 16 and in whose veins coursed the blood of nationalism, the call was irresistible and with the wholehearted approval of his parents, 
he threw himself headlong into the movement of which Shri C. Rajagopala Charyar was already a part. A small contingent of 100 volunteers was formed and for the first time in history, a contingent unarmed with the implements of war set out to meet the armed might of the mightiest British Empire there ever was. After a successful symbolic defiance of the SALT Act, the entire batch of volunteers was arrested and sentenced for six months. Sundaram spent his term at the central jail at Trichy, Coimbatore and at Madras purposefully, understanding the fundamentals of Gandhian philosophy and gaining competence in Hindi. This period of internment upset his academic studies, but he successfully completed the course later on at the London Mission High School before proceeding to Madras to join the Presidency College for University Education, opting for Science Group. As a dutiful son, Sundaram realized that his interests too were vested in the textile industry. After completing the intermediate course at the Presidency College Madras, Sundaram left for England to study textile technology at the Municipal College of Technology, Bolton in Lancashire, the hub of the cotton industry and the centre for the finest spinning technology in the world at the time. Once Sundaram was comfortably settled in Bolton, he concentrated on his studies and on acquiring technical know-how that could be suitably adapted to his own ventures in the field back home. Sundaram was a student with academic achievements and spent most of his time in serious learning. He displayed keen interest in his chosen field and made it a point to visit as many textile industries as possible and would never miss any of the textile exhibitions being held. Sports and games were a passion to Sundaram who was a member of the Bolton hockey team. Badminton and tennis were his favorite indoor games in winter. After successfully completing his course in textile technology, Sundaram returned home in 1938. When Devarajalu, the elder brother of Sundaram, who until then had been managing the Coimbatore cotton mills, took over the onerous job of developing the Lakshmi mills in 1938, Sundaram took over from him the management of the Coimbatore cotton mills. Sundaram was a technical genius in his chosen profession of textiles. Workers at the mill recall how Sundaram used to be at the work spot, instructing workers and test running the newly installed units much as a blue collar technician until the desired maximum efficiency was achieved. All the mills in and around Coimbatore looked upon the Coimbatore cotton mills as their model in matters of labor policies and decision making. It was the pioneering ideas, sound technical knowledge and far-sightedness of Sundaram that made them follow suit. It was around this time that the idea of opening of a new branch mill at Kovilpatti originated. What initially was a 50-acre site has now blossomed into a textile complex covering over 300 acres. Putting up a modern textile plant in a backward village was no ordinary venture. It involved tremendous risk, but a risk well taken and amply rewarded. With the untimely demise of Sri Kuppu Naidu in 1942, the burden of taking care of Lakshmi mills and the cotton mills fell on the shoulders of his sons. Due to their relentless efforts, the following years turned out to be the golden years of glory for the mills. In an effort to expedite the regional industrial development through cooperative efforts, Sundaram facilitated the establishment of United Bleachers Limited at Metupalayam with five other mills as partners. And this obviated the necessity to send all cloth produced here to Bombay for bleaching. This was the first time in industrial history that five limited companies joined hands to form a new limited company. From site selection to machinery installation, Sundaram was fully involved. He was a dedicated employer, spending over 12 hours each day at the site, supervising the erection of machines. 
As a profit-sharing venture, United Bleachers was a unique success. The company then became a wholly owned subsidiary of Lakshmi Mills. Sundaram was the pioneer who introduced peroxide bleaching, a process that made the whites whiter and a process that no other company could match. He was instrumental in increasing the capacity of United Bleachers to one lakh meters a day, the biggest bleaching facility in India at that time. Sundaram had a passion for the weaving side of the textile industry. Under his expert supervision and guidance, the latest air jet looms are today reeling out on an average 35,000 meters of assorted types of woven textiles each day, conforming to international standards. During the post-war period, Sundaram visited all the developed countries. Impressed with the technical developments he had seen there, Sundaram wanted to establish a new mill back home that would be the benchmark for all future developments in the country in the field of textiles. This ambition led him to establish the Palladam unit of Lakshmi Mills. The elevation of the building, the humidification unit and the machineries installed were most modern at the time, which reduced the manpower requirement to one-third. This generated immense interest in the people related to the textile industry and attracted even the Birlas and Sri Bharatram of DCM to have a look at the innovative technologies introduced by Sundaram. GKS, as he is affectionately known to his innumerable friends and admirers, is recognized by his peers as a natural leader. He is a great collaborator in the industry and a philanthropist who is very generous with money but never of time. He is an upright man with a noble heart. One of the most outstanding traits of Sundaram has been the correct assessment of situations, a careful weighing of the possible course of action with suitable alternatives. His business acumen and forthrightness has earned him the reputation of a shrewd and honest businessman of impeccable integrity. Many instances stand proof to his exemplary courage and honesty. In the late 1940s, a major labor strike was gaining momentum and Sri R. Venkatraman, the then Minister for Industries, turned to GKS for support to tackle the situation. It was the timely intervention of GKS that brought about a quick end to what would otherwise have turned into a major catastrophe in the history of Indian textile industry. G.K. Sundaram is undoubtedly a true and dedicated follower of the great political savant Sri C. Rajagopalacharyar, popularly known as Rajaji, of whom any Indian can legitimately be proud. He reflects Rajaji in so many facets of his life, of which a non-pretentious lifestyle, shorn of all ostentatious display of power and pomp, is perhaps the most outstanding. It was no surprise that GKS voluntarily joined the Swatantra party when Rajaji formally launched it. With his courage, conviction and sincerity of purpose, it was but natural that he rose to be one of the pillars of the party. As a member of parliament, he made his mark and his six years of service to the people and the nation is a record of achievement and fulfillment, inevitably punctuated with disappointments and frustrations. The six years as a member of the Rajya Sabha brought out the best in Sundaram, who battled with conviction each and every one of the strangulating measures sought to be introduced by the central government. His case against the various taxation measures proposed by the government was unassailable. He went hammer and tongs against the government's policy of deficit banking, the debilitating consequences of which are evident in the vicious inflationary spiral that continues even to this day. He anticipated with uncanny foresight the dangers inherent in the nationalization of credit institutions and the blatant discrimination in the lending rates between the private and public sector that it almost amounted to smothering private entrepreneurship in many vital sectors. He advocated that the economic policies should be made liberal, planning realistic and administration efficient. 
the debate on the Finance Bill 1966 afforded him an opportunity to attack some of the flaws in the government policy. GKS felt that too much emphasis was being laid on the wealth, repaying capacity and experience of an industrialist in granting of licenses. If the person's scheme was acceptable, workable and profitable, he should be given monetary credit. Some of the welfare measures that the government is implementing today were suggested by GKS four decades back. What he foresaw in the 1960s about globalization, the government is realizing today. The former finance minister, Sri P. Chidambaram, held GKS in high esteem, for GKS knew so much about industries, business, economics, and long-term effects of reforms. He stated that financing policies and taxation methods of the government were addressed upon for the first time when GKS was a member of the parliament. No wonder Sri P. Chidambaram remarked in the course of his speech at the Silver Jubilee celebrations of the South India Cotton Association at Coimbatore that GKS would have made a very efficient finance minister of India. In 1962, GKS was elected as the president of the Indian Chamber of Commerce that was founded by Sri R. K. Shanmugam Chittiar to promote, foster and protect the interests of Indian trade with special emphasis on Coimbatore town and district. GKS put in 25 years of dedicated service and apart from safeguarding the interests of its members, some of the most remarkable achievements of the chamber were witnessed during this period. The introduction of the West Coast Express and the Jayanti Janata Express via Coimbatore. The introduction of two fast express trains, the Kove Express and the Cheran Express between Madras and Coimbatore. Construction of the Avinashi flyover off Uppilipalayam. Introduction of a daily express between Coimbatore and Madurai. The Irugur Coimbatore Railway Link. Upgradation of the Coimbatore AIR station and the inauguration of a TV relay transmitter. GKS's achievements in the field of textiles are not limited to the state of Tamil Nadu alone. He has helped set up a textile mill in the Godavari district in the state of Andhra Pradesh. This was the first textile unit there that set the trend for many other mills to follow. GKS has been closely associated with organizations like Southern India Mills Association, SAIMA, South India Cotton Association, SAIKA, Indian Cotton Association, ICA, Indian Cotton Mills Federation, ICMF, and South India Textile Research Association, CITRA, and has held high offices as President and Secretary of these organizations, enabling them to have the benefit of his mature experience and competent guidance. GKS was a pioneer in the textile industry, who showed keen interest in the development of new cotton varieties. What today stands as the South India Cotton Association is the dream pearl of Sri G.K. Sundaram. It is today one of the national level organizations recognized by the government of India and serving the cotton community in India and abroad. It was the vision of GKS to establish the fiber testing laboratory at Saika that today has the state-of-the-art HVI testing machine. At the Silver Jubilee celebrations of the South India Cotton Association on the 13th of June 2003, the status of Emeritus President was conferred on Sri G.K. Sundaram in recognition of his 21 years of continuous dedicated service as the President of Saika. As the Honorary Secretary and thereafter as Chairman of the Southern India Mills Association, he has done yeoman service to the industry in the management aspect. As the Vice Chairman for 13 years and the Chairman for 16 years of the South India Textile Research Association, GKS has guided the research activities of the association for the benefit of the textile industry for 30 long years. Due to his adept stewardship, Citra is today considered to be one of the premier research organizations in the textile industry. 
when the growth of Lakshmi Mills is considered over a period of nearly a century, the beginnings appear very humble. The simple seed that the founder, Sri G. Kupaswami Naidu, had sown has, over the years, grown into a mighty and magnificent tree, providing sustenance, shelter and succor to many. The genesis of the Kupaswami Naidu Charity Trust may be traced back to the year 1948 and to a modest sum of 25,000 rupees received from an insurance company on the demise of Sri Kupaswami Naidu in 1942. His younger brother, G. Venkataswami Naidu, contributed an equal amount and with 50,000 rupees as capital, the Kupaswami Naidu Charity Trust for Education and Medical Relief was registered in October 1948. To fulfill their founder's enduring wish of a hospital for women and children in Coimbatore, the Trust established the G. Kupuswami Naidu Memorial Hospital in the year 1952. What started as a 50-bedded hospital has today grown phenomenally in size, vastly expanding its activities and providing the latest facilities in various departments. In the year 1998, Coimbatore was engulfed in communal riots that left several hundreds injured. The G. Kupuswami Naidu Memorial Hospital, under instructions from GKS, provided treatment to the injured free of cost. In the year 1954, he started the Mani Higher Secondary School, Papanayakan Padayam, named after G.K. Govindaswami Naidu, fondly known as Mani. The G. Venkataswami Naidu College at Kovilpatti, named after the founder's younger brother, and the Lakshmi Mills Higher Secondary School at Kovilpatti, stand proof to the commitment of this family to provide education to the rural youth. Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, a charitable public trust is solely devoted to the promotion of education, art and culture of our nation. As a pioneer in education, GKS was responsible for starting the Coimbatore Kendra of the Bhavan in 1963 and for starting the Parati Avidya Bhavan's matriculation school in the year 1980. Devotion and religious fervor has been characteristic of the family. With GKS on the board of trustees, a trust called Periya Govinda Swami Naidu Hindu Religious Trust was formed in the year 1959 with the objective of administering and maintaining Hindu religious institutions in India. Pursuant to its objective, the trust has renovated several temples and has arranged for feeding of the poor on various occasions. GKS was instrumental in the establishment of the Arshavidya Gurukulam near Anekgatti, Coimbatore, under the auspices of the Sruti Seva Trust. This unique Gurukulam of His Holiness Swami Dayananda Saraswati is situated on an expanse of about 50 acres and is a residential institution where Vedanta, Sanskrit and other branches of Vedas are methodically taught to foster the essence of our ancient wisdom and ethos. On the literary front, GKS is the founder president of the Kamban Karagam for the Coimbatore chapter since 1972 and is the author of a book titled Nan Kanda Kamban. He has shown immense interest in publishing the Kamba Ramayana Vilakka Ure in Tamil in eight volumes. The role played by him in popularizing the Kamba Ramayana has drawn appreciation from far and wide. For his priceless service in the field, he was recently honored with the title Kamban Kavalar from Kamban Karagam, Sri Lanka. GKS is the author of a book titled Textile Policing that calls for changes in the strangulating government policies and shows the way for a better future with reference to the textile industry. Sundaram had taken it upon himself to alleviate those who had been afflicted with leprosy. He has generously extended help to a number of asylums housing these victims long before the government woke up to the seriousness of the disease. GKS has also established an old age home at Bordanur, 
where the sick and the aged are taken care of with love. GKS is a man of character, an apt definition of the word. He is a Gandhian to the core, a man of simple living and high thinking. At all stages of his life, he listened to people with an open mind and helped them express their ideas completely. Clad in his dhoti shirt angavastram or the safari suit, no doubt made out of the products of Lakshmi Mills, Sri G.K. Sundaram is geniality personified. He is known to be an exacting but gentle taskmaster. The tremendous drive and energy indispensable for the discharge of his duties as chairman and managing director of such a large industrial complex which he so ably presides over are latent, not readily apparent. There is not the slightest hint of stress and strain that is a part of the daily life of an industrialist of his stature. It is indeed his iron will and rigid self-discipline that enables him to maintain such composure totally free from exhibiting any emotion. The woman behind the successful man is undoubtedly Nilaveni Tayar, the daughter of Velai the Swami Naidu and Krishnammar of Virgalpatti Pudu, a gracious and graceful lady who stood by her husband through thick and thin. The couple is blessed with three wonderful children. Daughter Sunita has two children. Sons Pati and Karivardhan have two children each and Pati is now the Vice Chairman and Managing Director of the Lakshmi Mills Company Limited. Sundaram is a patriot. In all the things that he did then and in his later life, he was always held national service as the topmost priority of his life. About his management of the industry, I should like to say that he was one of the most progressive employers in Coimbatore. Sundaram lived a very glorious life. He has been a great philanthropist, a good industrialist, a man with sympathy, a God-fearing man, religious but not superstitious. He is a successful businessman and efficient, good, at the same time conforms to dharma. So he has proved in his life that it is possible to live a life of dharma and still be successful. It is wrong to assume that one cannot be successful if one follows dharma. If you want to see a man of dharma, you just have darshan of GKS. GKS has touched life at many points and his life will definitely be a source of inspiration to the younger generation to whom the future belongs. If the coming generations hold GKS in great regard, it will not be just because he has been a successful industrialist and entrepreneur, a liberal in his political convictions, but also because he is a dedicated humanist with enlightened views. He belongs to the old world of culture and dharma. He has had the courage which very few have of standing up in support of what he believes to be right. He has been fighting out perhaps often lone battles for the society for a better tomorrow by virtue of industrial and economic growth of the nation. Sri G. K. Sundar, a positive contributor to the industrial and trading sectors of the region, to the citizens of Coimbatore and to the progress and prosperity of the nation as a whole in various fields like industry, economy, employment, education, healthcare, sports, culture, religion, and so on. Sri G.K. Sundaram is unique, a true son of the nation, an intellectual, a good Samaritan, and 
a warrior. Shri G.K. Sundaram.